What's going on YouTubers, gamers and hobbyists? Welcome to this episode of the There Is Only Warhammer. This is where we talk through the updates that are coming out of GW and the Warhammer community uh, website. And on this episode we're concentrating on uh, Imperial Knights through its faction focus. I will say now, um, I am not able to do the videos uh, for the next couple of days how I would have hoped to, like I did my last one because of a uh, a family crisis um, involving in hospitals and poor health but enough of that just to let you know that but I'm just getting them out there so we're pumping out the the info for you so I'll just read through what we've got here on Imperial Knights it says Imperial Knights strike the battlefield like colossi raining down destruction on the enemies of the Emperor with powerful weapons and stalwart defense how will these mechanical behemoths play in the new Warhammer 40,000 the Questor Imperialis or Imperial Knights are knights in more than just name. They live their lives by chivalric codes and pledge fealty to their High Kings and the Emperor. Through the throne Mechanicum, these nobles bond with their mighty knights and enter into, a, into battle for the honour of their household. Imperial Knights currently play as an all or nothing army. What I mean by this is that they either totally overwhelm their opponent with high armour, powerful weapons and devastating melee, or they get crushed by an army that has the specific tools to deal with them. This is largely due to the game mechanics of the way Warhammer 40,000 plays. Many weapons cannot hurt a knight at all, while some devastate them, such as destroyer weapons or large numbers of melter weapons. This creates very swingy, often short games. That can leave one or both players leaving feeling a bit flat. Quite right too. In the new edition, this dynamic changes quite a bit, as everything can hurt everything else. A player in the game versus the an Imperial Knight army will never feel entirely helpless. While firing a Grot Blaster at a knight is highly unlikely to do anything, it just might. However, to compensate for this increased vulnerability, the Imperial Knights have also been given a lot of wounds, and by a lot I mean 24. They're also toughness 8 with 3 plus save, they're quite literally twice as durable as a Lehman Russ, which is itself a difficult unit to take down. Add in the inclusion of a 5 plus invulnerable save against shooting, regardless of which direction the shots are fired from, thanks to their ion shield, and you've got a resoundingly resilient unit. Some stats for you there, if you can see that. I'll read them out anyways. So if you can hear the interference, that's the fan. I'm so hot, so hot here. Anyway, this is a knight errant. Uh, movement will depend on... Um, uh, you know how much damage he's taken and, and so on and so forth how many wounds remaining he's got but <coughs> at full health he can move 12 inches if he's got between 7 and 12 wounds he can move 9 and if he's got between 1 and 6 uh, wounds left he can move 6 inches so that's his movement weapon skill will also vary uh, depending on how many wounds he's got left if he's got between 13 and 24 plus then it'll be 3 plus uh, 7 and 12, 4 plus, uh, 1 to 6, 5 plus, and the same with his ballistic skill. Again, 13 to 24 wounds, uh, he'll have 3 plus uh, ballistic skill, uh, 7 and 12 wounds, 4 plus, and 1 to 6, 5 plus. He's got strength, 8, toughness, 8, so he starts off with 24 wounds, uh, 4 attacks, uh, leadership, 9, and a 3 plus save, so there you go. But it's not all about defence. Imperial Knights pack absolutely blistering firepower too. The Thermal Cannon is utterly lethal now. Heavy D3, strength 9, AP minus 4 and D6 damage rolling 2D6 and taking the highest when in half range. Will leave many targets as nothing more than smoking craters with a single volley. If that weren't bad enough, if that weren't enough, the cannon gets D6 shots versus unit with 5 or more models. I think you can see, start to see how useful command points can be when using weapons like this, maximising the effect they can have at just the right time. Another big change is how stomps work. Previously, stomps simply removed models entirely from the game on the roll of a 6. While this was useful for dealing with some problematic character laden units, which were hyper durable, it could create gameplay situations which were not very satisfying for players when their favourite model was unceremoniously stomped into oblivion with no saves. Now called Titanic Feet, these are still fearsome weapons, but do not simply remove models from play, and if kicking and stomping models isn't enough, 
you've always got your trusty Reaper Chainsword and Thunderstrike Gauntlet to fall back on. Both of which do an automatic 6 damage per successful attack. Ouch! The Thunderstrike Gauntlet also has the ability to chuck a destroyed monster or vehicle at another enemy unit within 9 inches to do D3 mortal wounds on a 4 plus splat. Nice! That's a bit of War Machine coming in there, isn't it? Chucking uh, other models. You know, throw them. That's good. I like that. Good, good dynamic. Uh, knights will be a unit that cannot be ignored, and if you're fighting against them, you will need to plan. You will need a plan to deal with them when writing your list. While tough, they are not invincible, and in melee particularly, they can find themselves to be somewhat more vulnerable. The canny knights general will need to be wary of enemy models with multiple d6 damage, melee attacks such as trigons, which can severely damage or destroy knights in a single lucky round of combat. Knight players will also be happy to know they are no longer so easily bogged down by large cannon fodder units. In the new Warhammer 40,000 they can simply walk over infantry models and leave combat while still, but still being able to fire their weapons. They are fearsome units indeed. Yeah, I can see why they would, being so massively big. Though you don't often see large numbers of knights in a single army, uh, those few are easily the match for many armies, and thanks to the new super heavy detachment, you'll still be able to field them all on their own, if that's how you roll. Super heavy detachment, there, uh, there you go, see that? Uh, three to five Lords of War. Restrictions. All units must be from the same faction. Command benefits plus three command points. There's a lot more to say about this army, but for today that is all we have time left for. We hope you're as excited to put your knights on the table as we are. And I must get mine finished, but yeah, that's sounding quite good for our Imperial Knights, so wanted to get that one out there. And yeah, sounding good. That one's sounding good and seems to make quite a bit of sense to me. So uh, thank you for watching. As always, all brushes lead to what I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.